Hey guys, so I haven't made a video in like, ooh, since April last year. Uh, let's rectify that and make a tutorial thingy in Unity, shall we? So what I was thinking was, since I've already started sort of doing a lot of concept on games with uh, first person controllers and uh, with both p uh, Bolt, the, the uh, blueprint knockoff for Unity and uh, Playmaker. I want to show off how to make a first person controller using Playmaker. And you don't need C Sharp or anything else other than just Playmaker to make this character controller. So let's, let's um, show off how it would end up, shall we? So, you can look around, you can move around, sprint if you want. There's no animations, of course, this is just simple. And this is just a test scene to show off that you can jump and climb distances. There's a slight problem with this one right now, and that is... Uh, yeah, you don't just walk off and then just sort of fall off like you... Like you would think you would. The problem is that the um, first or the character controller in Unity is a capsule, so its uh, bottom is actually rounded, and that means that you could uh, start walking on kind of the edge of whatever you're standing on. Uh, yeah, just don't don't worry. That's just a Unity thing, I guess. You can walk up and down stairs, but not two tall objects. They have to be a certain distance. Jumping, crouching, yeah. I'm gonna go through all of that in this, I guess, a series of videos detailing how to make a character controller using Playmaker and, of course, Unity. So, let's get to it, shall we? So this is the one that I've already created. Kind of made it work like I kind of wanted to. Uh, so let's just disable that one. Uh, actually, let's yeah, create a new one. Zero, zero, zero. Not there. Place it there and up a bit. Otherwise, you might fall into the ground. I guess. Let's. Copy the camera, and paste the camera, put it as a child on the new game object, if you create a game object. Let's call it player character. Let's call it that. Now, there are many ways of creating a character controller. You could make it using uh, Unity's physics. And you would need like a capsule, a box collider, and a rigid body. If you use a box collider, you would have to do it in a different way than if you use a capsule collider. Then you can't turn the object or the player, because then you would, if you're standing next to a wall, you would push yourself out. Because, um, well, when you rotate, you would rotate the... Yeah. And that's bad. You would have to do it a different way. So... When you have the camera placed on the character, uh, the player character, you would have to also put it at eye level, right? Otherwise, you would have to be walking on the ground. So, if we say um, the player character is two meters tall, then you would have to place the eyes at like I don't know, one point eight. And since it's ch it's it's put as a child or the player character is its parent, then when we move the player character, the camera moves with it, of course. Okay, so we're not gonna use just regular uh, rigid body and capsule collider. We're gonna use the actual character controller because it has some nifty features with slope limiting and a step offset. So you would uh, be able to walk up these steps without pushing the object up, you would just kind of walk up it. 
like you would normally do. Like uh, in Half-Life, you would sort of step up onto the step instead of pushing it with physics. But as you can see, this is where the character controller would collide with. But the camera's up there. Why won't we? Why don't we just put the camera down where the thingy is? Well, if you're gonna make a game where you spawn in a player, you would have to put all the spawn points a certain distance above ground instead of just if this was uh, the player spawner or whatever, right? If we put that at zero, 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 then the player would spawn there. But since the player characters zero. Um, the pivot point is in the middle of the object then when we spawn the character it would kind of be inside the ground so mm, let's not do that let's preemptive strike this with uh, putting setting the, the the pivot at the bottom and you do that by changing the center thingy here putting it at one since that's, uh, well, it's two meters tall and it's placed in the center, so one meter down or one unit down. Yeah. Now, if we simply hit play already, nothing would happen because we haven't put in anything. We haven't put in physics or can't move the camera around, you can't move the character around. So, let's try and make that, shall we? So, on the player character, you would have to create a new FSM in Playmaker. So, add FSM and uh, call it something like movement yeah let's just call it movement to start with and within the state uh, the start state so one of the things that I did when I didn't really know how to make character controllers in the beginning like years ago <laughs> I am um, I would sort of make different states for different uh, like things the character would do so if we move if he moved right he would have a different state that the the starting state would just sort of do, does you does the player press D yes then he goes to here and the character would move right that's kind of a poopy way of doing it so we're gonna make it more unified and more optimized because doing these uh, transitions are expensive and they cost a frame so from going to here to here is one frame usually so we do that by putting everything we need within the uh, the controlling of the character within this state so um, you could use the inputs of unity like horizontal vertical fire jump whatever I I like to use a different one called uh, what's it called again? Hard shell, uh, complete control, input manager, complete control, or something like that. Because uh, you could change it in uh, within the game. I haven't found a way of doing that with the Unity one, so I like this one. So I'm gonna keep using it. Yeah, vertical, horizontal with A and D and whatever, right? So it's the same thing, just you could manually change it later. So it doesn't really matter which which one you use, a custom one or whatever, just that you could get axes. So let's, within the action browser, let's type in get axes. And uh, the Unity one is called get axes. And it's the same workflow, it's just that it's a different plugin. So yours would be called get axes and I'm just gonna use the the hard shell one that I created myself and let's put that one in and let's get horizontal and put it at multiplier one whatever doesn't matter right now let's create a new variable let's call it axis horizontal what you could do something that I like to do also is to uh, put folders with my variables so well this is already put it as a float so we don't have to create a new float but just as an example I like what I like to do just to keep everything sort of uh, organized 
is to create folders with a forward slash and then horizontal. So now when you go into this thing, you would see like an axis and then a folder with horizontal. So now it's not just like a super long list of everything. Though if you want to keep everything sort of programmer language uh, with syntax or whatever, you would like name it like they would and usually like that. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep it like that so let's just keep going so get axis horizontal multiplier just keep it at one every frame hook that off so let's let's try it now i've uh, turned off maximize on play so we can actually view what happens within the playmaker you hit play and still nothing happens now what happens if we press any buttons W doesn't do anything, S doesn't do anything, but A does. Look at the look at the value here. One when we go right, and minus one when we press A or go left. Hey, how do we use that to control our character? Well, you would have to put it into let's see. Uh, what's it called again? Controller you could use simple move then it has its own gravity but it would be a lot harder to make jumping happen so let's just put it into controller move let's use that and drag that in so you would have to use the values that you get from this get axis to move it but this uses vector 3 so we would have to make a new vector called What should we call it? Movement vector? Movement vector, I guess. Because that's what it is, it's a movement vector. Uh, space. Oh. Ah, just keep it at self. Then it's walking within its own space. So, uh, we still haven't really used the floating variable for the character controller could be wrong about the word thing but whatever yes. ignore that so we would have to do the vector set vector 3 XYZ that's the one we need put it in between otherwise well because it it, wor it works like it goes from this one to this one to this one and then it loops back this one this one this one every frame or every time slice or whatever so vector movement vector set it its x values to axis horizontal every frame so now it sets this value this values this vectors value x to this now what i also like to do is also call it call whatever this thing is what it gets so this gets axis horizontal so now we could fold it back down so it doesn't take up so much space now let's hit play and let's see what it does and now we're already managing to move left and right although rather slowly that's because it's moving one unit per second so it takes one unit since we've put it to per second one unit per second but we, we aren't able to rotate it yet, but we're getting to that. So, how do we have that? Let's just create another one, copy this one. It's called vertical. And vertical. New variable axis, vertical. There we go. Close it down or minimize it. Now, within the set vector thingy, on Z value, set it to vertical. Y is up and unity, so that's what we're gonna use for gravity when we get there. So, there we go. Now we should be able to move in uh, both forward and backward. Oh, what's that? Ah, 
message. Ignore that. So, moving forward, backwards, left and right. So, we got that working. Now let's uh, add gravity. So, gravity. What does What is gravity? Well, it's a value. Well, in the game, it's a value that's being subtracted by a number. That's basically gravity. So let's add a new FSM, or that's gravity within this project, I guess. Call it gravity. Now let's have a float subtract. And the float is going to be called gravity. And it's being subtracted by 9.81. Uh, that's that's the meter per or meter squared per second that gravity acts on anything, I, th I think. And we set it to every frame and per second. And uh, let's see. So, since we've made this within a different FSM, finite state machine, how do we get that value into here? Why don't why can't we just use it from within here? Oh, we could, but now we've sort of split them up, so it's more organized. So you could do the whole thing from within here. But it, yeah, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, really. But I like to do it this way because then you can f more fine-tune fine, uh, fine -tune it if you add different states, like... If you want it to be floating, you can have a different state for floating and you wouldn't have to make a new movement controller. So now it's more unified within what it does, really. So you would have to, in, in order to get a float value or any value from a different FSM, you would have to use a get FSM float or whatever, whatever variable you're, you're going to get. Or you could use a set FSM, and that's what we're going to use. So for every set to every frame um, within movement, oh, well, we have we don't have a we don't have a floating float variable for gravity yet. So X is gravity. Let's make that create a new one, a float within gravity. Then go back here set the variable name to gravity and whatever its uh, value should be set to if you click this one you can set it to a different variable within this FSM so set it to gravity so now we have this subtractor thing subtracts this value from this variable every frame per second and then it sets this movement variable axis gravity to that value that it just did the um, the subtraction to so now we have gravity if we go to axis gravity there we go and now if we hit play you'll see the value start to make gravity act on the character controller but you can see it's continuously subtracting from that value every frame per second. That could be disastrous. So if we now walk up here, up this thing, and fall off, it's boom, right down instantaneously. So what we would have to do is clamping the float. So float, clamp and gravity clamp it to minim minimum value to well I like to use the one well, at the 9.81 and maximum to whatever 20 why maximum we might use this gravity in order to make a different mechanic so set it to every frame you want it to clamp the gravity every frame and then after that it sets the FSM float to whatever this gravity floating point uh, float variable is and that's being clamped so now if we go back and hit play uh, 
it now clamps at 9.81 minus 9.81. Falling off feels a bit more normal. It has some weight to it. We could add, well, later we could add a uh, mechanic for testing whether or not the character controller is grounded, and we need that for jumping as well. Otherwise, we'd be able to jump indefinitely, even within the air. Yeah, it feels kind of natural, I guess. Could have been better, but it also could be a lot worse. So let's just keep it at that. Let's also tidy up this thing, it's called, just called idle, I don't know. Same within here. I like to use blue as like, whenever it's not really doing anything super active, it's just doing background stuff. So blue and calling it idle, I don't know, just don't need to, but I like it. And whenever you're doing some, something really active, I like to color it green. Just so you know that, oh yeah, it's doing something really important. It's not just doing background stuff. So yeah, now we have gravity and we can move it. But we're moving a bit slow. That's why we need to change this multiplier to a different float. So let's create a new one. Let's call it speed. All right. And let's multiply it by speed. And go into the variables tab set the speed to something more than just one. Let's set it to four. That's a nice value, four units per second. Hit play. Yeah, now we can move a lot more. But there's an issue. Do you see this? We're moving faster when we move diagonally. That's because it's now you're moving uh, both in value, one in forward and one left. That means, well, you're moving a lot more like in the square. See the axis are like, like a square. When it's not moving, it's in the center. And when it's moving forward, it hits like an edge here. That's why this distance is a lot longer and there, therefore you move quicker when you're moving diagonally. So how could we use clamping? For this, we could, but there's an issue. If we clamp the movement vector, then also gravity gets clamped. So what we need to do is take away these ones. Let's make a new one called axis vector and clamp it by, um, actually let's just clamp it by one so we know it's being clamped. Uh, vector XYZ set it, the axis vector do the same thing with the axis horizontal to X axis vertical to Z every frame and then we're, we're clamping it and within the axis the movement vector thingy the vector value set it to axis vector but this would now put out multiplied by four. So we need to set this back to one. And now we need to multiply this one instead. Or actually we don't need to, but uh, hold on. We need to multiply it after the clamping. There it is, okay. Vector, multiply, vector three, multiply. Axis vector. Multiply it by speed. Every frame. So now it gets these vectors or these axes, sets them into this axis vector. It clamps it so the magnitude is always equal to one. Tying it, tidying it up, and then we'll we're uh, multiplying it by speed. By the speed variable that we we've already set up, and then we're putting it back into the movement vector. There. 
and then it's being put into the move the controller. So this should now work. If not, I've done something horribly wrong. Falling down works. And this also works. As you can see on the uh, move the controller work uh, move thingy, the vectors it's being moved by forward is one, backwards or four. I mean, forwards is four, backwards is four. Diagonally is now two point eight. That's because that's its magnitude. It's always now moving in a circle, sort of like in a like your um, like on your Xbox or PlayStation controller with a with the thumbsticks, it's not it's like it's not in a square, it's in a circle because well, you have a magnitude of how much it should it should um, move by. Alright, so that's the whole movement controller thingy done. And gravity. How do we make the character controller look? Well let's create a new one and let's just call it Look here, we're gonna call it look. That's how simple it is. Call it idle, paint it blue. <laughs> Don't need to, but I do it. Um, search for a mouse look and use this mouse look thingy. There we go. That's all you need, really. This thing. If you already hit play, you're, you're gonna see some strange oddities. So let's drag this game window out, putting it down here. Let's keep the scene camera here just to see what happens. You don't need to do this, but see what happens when we now look around. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Why is this happening? This shouldn't happen. Stop, make it stop, please. Make it stop. Okay. That happens because you're trying to move the entire object, the player, with this look thingy. It's on the character itself, so it would try to move, with, uh, try to rotate the, char the character itself. That's bad, because this thing is, well, it's controlled by physics, so you would basically just tilt the entire player. That's not good. So, we need to split this in into two things. So, uh, one which turns the entire player itself, and one which turns the, car uh, the camera, or tilts the camera. Excuse me. <clears throat> the, the one that turns the player should only axis the horizontal one, move in horizontal. So, now we can just set this to one or zero, set these to nothing, because we don't need it. And 15 is quite a high, high value, so let's set it to oh, 2. 15 is like quite a lot, that's it's like setting your mouse to maximum uh, sensitivity and moving the camera around. So now we have one which controls the owner itself, game object owner, it controls this thing. And then we need to make a copy of it, which moves in Y. Set the X to zero, set the Y to two, and this controls the camera. Put these down, let the player down. So you could do a specify game object and then just grab the camera and dragging it into it. Bad, bad, no, no, we don't do that. What we do is we click this thing so we could use a different variable and we, then we get, we type in get child get child from owner let's look for camera hopefully we also should tag it as main camera that would help a lot and it is tagged as main camera that's good if it isn't tag it as main camera the, this this thing yeah and then store it in main camera or just camera doesn't really matter get camera specified game object is camera so now we move in the y-axis rotate the y-axis we turn the camera okay now we've got look mouse look 
hit play. And boom, it's as simple as that. But we don't want the cursors, the, the, the mouse cursor to be seen, so we could, uh, what we could do is also add a, a new one called cursor, set mouse cursor, just add it in here or within a new FSM, but right now let's just add it in here, hide cursor and lock cursor. So now it wouldn't escape the game view itself and whenever we press escape, the the mouse cursor comes back into it. You don't you don't need to add any logic to it. So yeah, hit play. So yeah, now we got got something moving. It's as simple as that, folks. We got no jumping, no crouching yet. We could add jumping soon. But you should uh, be able to toy around with this already. So I'll make a new video detailing how to make a jumping and crouching. And um, within the jumping video, we should also be able to make the character know when it's grounded, so we don't, so we won't be able to jump when we're in the air indefinitely. Okay, so. That's that. See you on the next one. Probably tomorrow. Or in two days. Who knows. Whenever I decide to make another one. It won't be another eight months. I promise. Hope you liked it. And see you on the next one.